Does that answer your question, Bobby? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. <laughs> You all remember Metro Golden Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, and Southern. But first, your announcer. <laughs> I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie was here from Brooklyn. You know, some people are born with silver spoons in their mouths. They even go to finishing school. But my schooling was finished with a sixth grade. Of course, I may not be educated, but I ain't ignorant. There's a difference, you know. Maybe I don't know the score of Pagliacci or the Barber of Seville, but I sure know the score when it comes to men. Of course, there are some men you can trust, and someday I'll find them. Meanwhile, I'm still window shopping around. I'm in no hurry. I can still support myself in the style which I have forced myself to become accustomed. When I was a kid back in Brooklyn, we were lucky if we had three square meals a day. Now that I'm grown up and in show business, I'm lucky if I can get an occasional postage stamp to lick. Not this week, of course. This week I'm working. I'm appearing at the biggest theater in town. The manager auditioned lots of girls for the job, but I got it because of my voice. The manager liked the way I said, there's a better selection of seats in the balcony, folks. Mm-hmm. I'm an usherette. I get 30 bucks a week and passes from wolves, mostly. But at least I got a job. <gasps> oh, my goodness. I won't have it long if I don't get across the street and into my uniform. Sorry, this is a busy intersection, but I just got to get across that street. Green light or no green light. Well, here goes. That quarter I spent for this police whistle was a pretty smart investment. Ouch! I'm dead. Oh, I'm sorry, mister. Did I knock you down? No, no. I'm just lying here with my ear on the ground to see if any enemy tanks are approaching. Oh. Are, are, you, are you hurt bad, miss? No, I don't think so. Ah! Oh! What's the matter? My head. It's all twisted around to my back. Oh, my gosh. Are you sure? Just look at it. Oh, no, it's all right. I just got my sweater on backwards. Somebody better get an ambulance. These kids shouldn't be allowed to drive these hot rods. Yeah, you should sue that crazy kid, miss. You ought to get the license number of his yeah, car. I think I have got it. In the back of my dress. Gee, I'm awful sorry, lady, but the, the light, it was green. And uh, at least I thought it, it was. Bring it up. Go on now. Keep moving. You too, miss. I'm not so sure I can keep moving, officer. You see... I was just knocked down by that hot rod. That young hoodlum was driving. All right, now, miss, what's your name? Maisie Revere. I'm Jerome Smertzkebruggen. All right, whose fault was it? Well, not the kid's officer. He was born with that name. No, no, I mean the accident. A serious thing like this could lead to a jail sentence, sonny. Okay, lock me up, officer. Put me behind bars for the rest of my life. I ain't got nothing to live for anyway. Well, now, young man, don't tell me a 16-year-old like you is tired of this little old world. I'm not 16. I'm 17. It's terrible. Hmm. Should happen to me if it's terrible. Well, I gotta get back to my job. And I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. It was you that almost got killed, miss. It should have been me. Oh, now, come, come, Sonny. Aren't you taking whatever it is just a wee bit too seriously? Yeah, that's right, Sonny. There's lots of things a kid... I mean, a man like you have to live for. Yeah? Give me a for instance. Well, there's girls. Girls. Bah. I hate all women. Oh, so that's it. Puppy love, miss. Yeah, puppy love. Some girls treating them like a dog. You give a woman the best years of your life, treat her like a queen. Cokes, double chocolate sundaes. With whipped cream. Yeah, and that's a nickel extra. Yeah. Brown's drugstore where we all hang out is expensive, but do they appreciate being wined and dined? No. no. Do they want a real guy who gives them security, understanding? No. no. You can never tell what a woman really wants. But you're a woman. Well, that's how I know. Oh. 
Mr. O., I hope you'll forgive me for butting in, but are you talking about any particular woman? Yeah, Florence Prince. She's gone all swoony over that icky Bobby Kent. Oh, she too, huh? And who's Bobby Kent? Bobby Kent's appearing across the street at the theater I'm working at. He's the country's number one bebop singer. Bebop? Yeah. That's a nervous breakdown set to music. Ever since that Kent character hit town, Florence has given me the complete slufferoo treatment. Slufferoo? Yeah, that's bebop for who needs you. Oh. Listen, Florence has every record Kent ever made. And since he started making that personal in town, she sees every performance. And after the theater closes, she locks herself in a room and keeps playing his records over and over again. Well, I don't mean she's gaga about him, Jerome. Yeah, maybe she just likes music. Then why does she burn incense while she's doing it? Oh, this ain't no ordinary garden variety crush officer. Little Florence is a real gone gal. You mean she's giving this nice boy the the slufferoo because that their Kent fellers sings hot? Oh, hotter than hot cheese. When that Kent character sings, they can serve the chocolate bars in Dixie cups. Let Florence have her pretty boy drip. Go ahead and arrest me, officer. She'll be sorry when I come out of jail a hardened criminal. Uh, uh, arrest? Do you wish to press charges, miss? No. I think Jerome's taking enough of a beating officer. Oh, gee, thanks, miss. Okay, sonny. Scram before this nice, kind young lady changes her mind. And drive carefully. Carefully? Yeah, you don't want to get killed, do you? You do want to live. What's so special about living? Huh. Well, miss, I guess you'd better get back to your job. There's nothing we can do about the kids' love life. Here, I'll walk you across the street. Oh, thanks, officer. I am still a little wobbly. <laughs> Too bad about Jerome, isn't it? He's a nice kid. Yeah, if I were that girl's father, I'd shoot that Bobby Kent. Yeah. Say, I wonder. You wonder what? Well, I get a couple of hours off from ushering later... Suppose I talk to Ken. You know, explain about Jerome and Florence. Maybe he could do something. Well, like what? Well, I don't know. Maybe straighten this Florence out. Send her back to Jerome and Chocolate Sunday. I'm really worried about that boy, Keith. Oh, but he's a total stranger, miss. You wouldn't go out of your way to help somebody you never met before, would you? After all, he could have broke your back. But he didn't. He just broke my heart. <laughs> The Bobby Kent, aren't you? Oh, well, what can I do for you, chick? My autograph, certainly. Oh, uh, no, Mr. Kent. Oh, my picture, then. Well, they're a dollar. The handle cost the mail on and stuff. I make very little on them, you know. Oh, uh, no, Mr. Kent. It's it's, uh, it's just something to make a poor, lovesick kid live happily ever after. Okay, but it'll just have to be a kiss on my forehead. Uh, look, chum, I don't want to cut in on that big love affair you're having with you. And I know I'm being a new... Oh, you're from the newspaper. Love my, love my, love me. Come in, Miss... Uh, uh, Maisie uh, Revere. Ah, and I, oh, what can I do for you, Miss Revere? My life story, certainly. I was born in a little log cabin, not unlike Abe Lincoln. And when my father first saw uh, me, Mr. he Kent, said... Mr. Kent, I've come on more of a personal mission. Well, he said... Uh, oh, hmm. you're not here for a story. You're hmm. Just interested in Bobby Kent, the man. Yeah. So grow up, will you? Oh, the fiery type. Hey, I like that. How about dinner tonight, hmm? No, tonight I'm having dinner with my husband. Oh. Uh. Well, let's make it after dinner. Uh, Mr. Kent, I came here to ask you a favor. Oh, a benefit. Well, sort of. Now, here's the situation. A certain boy named Jerome is in love with a girl called Florence. But she won't even look at him since you came to town. Oh, yeah, well, that happens everywhere. Oh, uh, I'm sure it does. So one girl, more or less, wouldn't make that much difference to you. Uh, Mr. Kent, do you suppose you could tell Florence that you can't stand silly bebop schmoes? But that would be bad publicity. Oh, on the contrary, it'd be great publicity. I can see the headlines now. Bobby Kent, nation's foremost bebopster, spurns all 16-year-old girls. You'll make millions of friends. Of who? Well, of all 16-year-old boys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Boys like records, too. You'll make a million dollars. Yeah, then I'll be able to give up bebop singing and go in for what I'm really destined uh. for. Opera. Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. Hello, Florence. I haven't seen you here at Brown. 
nonsense. It's merely a coincidence, Mr. Smirtzkebroigen. I just chanced in here by chance. Gosh, Florence, how can you be so aloof? You know what they were just playing on the juice box? What? Our song. Yours, perhaps, Mr. Smirtzkebroigen. My song happens to be Bobby Boy's dreamy theme ballad. Oh, he's real gone. I wish he was gone for good. So long, Florence. As far as I'm concerned, our engagement is over. Goodbye forever. Goodbye. I'll see you again tonight, maybe, huh? You will if you happen to be in the audience at any of Bobby Kent's performances. That does it. We're really through. I'm going to call up Clara Drunk. So who's stopping you? Well, this is Browse Drug Store, Bobby. Uh, can you recognize Florence? Oh, hardly. I've never seen her. Oh. Um, say, Jerk. <clears throat> I mean, Soda Jerk. Yeah, miss? Uh, do you know a girl called Florence who's that way about a kid called Jerome? You mean was that way about Jerome? Now she's gaga about a guy called Bobby Kent. I don't know what she sees in that guy. Blind fool. Say, you're Kent, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Kent, would you do me a favor? Oh, I certainly. Drop dead. Now, look here, you, Miss Revere, did you hear what this kid told me? Yeah, to do? but Why? please hold off till we straighten out Florence. Is she here, Bub? That's her, miss. The one at the newsstand drooling at little Bobby's puss in a fan mag. Hmm. She don't look the type. She looks almost bright. Um, oh, Florence. Florence. Yeah? Here she comes, Bobby. Now, remember, you got to make her hate the sight of you. Okay, but this ain't going to be easy. She's got eyes, you know. Oh. You call me, miss? Hello, come on. Oh! She recognizes you. Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent. I couldn't help it. You're so handsome, so debonair, so exciting. It's dying, Bobby. Wait, she hasn't finished yet. Oh, brother. <sighs> Gee, wait till the other girls hear that I actually, really and truly, honest to goodness, met Bobby Kent. I'm president of our local Bobby Kent fan club, president and scream leader. Get going, Bobby. Hey, girl, hey, girl, you remember? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Oh, so you're one of those silly kids that faint and scream and stuff like that there when I sing, huh? <laughs> so long now. Just a minute. Me, a silly kid? Well, I didn't mean exactly silly, is, but... Is that all you have to say, Mr. Kent? Well, it's all I rehearsed. Rehearsed? And uh, Mr. Kent also forgot that he thought you were a dope. Me? A dope? But in a charming way. Look who's calling me a dope. An ignoramus like you. At least I went to school, stupid. And Bobby said you came out stupid, too. I did? Hey, that's pretty clever of me. Maybe I'll become a comedian instead, huh? Mr. Kent, I think you're just conceited, horrible, disgusting. No, just a second. Don't, don't interrupt Bobby. She hasn't finished yet. I hate you. Hate you. To think I gave up a nice, sweet boy like Jerome to dedicate my life to a drip like you. Well, Clarence, you can do what? Marsh, what are you crying about? Jerome, this, this Kent creature insulted me. He did, huh? Put up your hand, goon. Well, if you insist, Maisie, hold my mirror. Jerome, don't. Everything's straightened out. Except Bobby, boy, and I'm going to straighten him out right on the floor. Oh, well, I... Jerome, smash him. I will. Somebody hold my bubble gum. Here I come, chum. <clears throat> oh. Well, that's that. Now, will somebody please pick me up? Jerome, you're, you're solid and so strong. Gosh, that breakfast food really does what they say, doesn't it? <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, Bobby. Are you hurt? Well, I never look much with this eye anyway. Well, that's what I get for trying to get a girl to fall out of love with me and go back to her local yokel. What? Bobby, you'll spoil everything. You did that for me, Bobby? Oh, oh you wonderful. Sacrificing yourself. Just like in the movies. Oh, well, Jerome, you really did it. Did what? Gosh, one minute it's me, then it's him. Women sure are peculiar. Come home with me, Bobby, darling. I'll put a beefsteak on your poor, dear, beautiful... But, Lawrence, quiet. She hasn't finished yet. Uh, gorgeous eye. Come on, Bobby Mia. Well, Jerome, you sure messed that up good. I don't know what it's all about. Now Florence goes for that tent fella more than ever. She'll never even look at me again. Well, don't worry, Jerome. Girls like that will be falling for guys like you long after men like Bobby Kent have died, but not before. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment.
Simply keep the sidewalk clear, folks, and line up two abreast along the curb. No pushing, lady. You'll get in to see Bobby Kent. Line up along the curb, please. Madam, you can't sneak in there. You'll have to get to the end of the line. Oh, the end of the line? Well, where is it, miss? Not too far, madam. Just go down to the corner, walk one block north, two blocks south, then a block east, and then three blocks west. Miss, will we all get in to see Bobby? Oh, hello, Miss Revere. Oh, hello, Jerome. You waiting to hear Drew Boy, too? Yeah, I had to see for myself what he's got that I ain't got that I wish he'd lend me some night when he ain't using it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, Jerome. But whatever he's got, he could make a fortune with it if he put it in bottles. Uh, Miss Revere, I'm sorry about this afternoon. I, I mean about lousing up your act at the drugstore. Yeah, it almost worked, didn't it? Uh, you and Florence still no speaky? Still no nothing. Oh. My life is finished. All I have are my memories. Well, they should keep you warm this winter. Girly, I'm sorry, but you'll have to get to the end of the line. Oh, oh Miss, I've warned the manager all day today. You'll have to keep this crowd from overflowing into the street and blocking traffic. Oh, hello, Maisie. Hello, officer. I'm doing my best, but it ain't easy to handle this Kent happy mob. Yeah, I know. Since that guy opened here, my wife's been too busy running to the theater to cook me a meal. You too, officer? Oh, you, Jerome. Hey, Maisie. Did you work on that bebopper like you said? Uh-huh. Any luck? Well, get a load of the expression on Jerome's face. Yeah, no luck. Mm. Gosh, something should be done about that Kent guy. Yeah, we could write to Congress and have him declared unconstitutional. I told you, miss, end of the line. Gee, you must have eyes in the back of your head. It's criminal, that's what it is. That little girl, she couldn't be more than 12 and standing in back of the line all night to hear a crooner. Somebody should talk to her mother. Well, go ahead, Chief. Her mother's at the front of the line. Florence is out of my life for keeps now. I heard that Bobby Kent promised to make her president of all the Bobby Kent drool clubs in America. Oh, no. Not Florence. Yeah, you'd think the man like Kent would go more for, well, somebody, you, you know. Uh... Yeah. Hey, that's it. Another girl. Huh? Come here, fellas. Got an idea. Yeah? Over here, fellas. What? Okay, Maisie. What goes? Look, kids. Girls all over the country write to Bobby Kent, right? Right. But he never answers them. Maybe he can't write. Oh, just listen, please. Suppose. Just suppose, mind you, that one girl did write an answer. And we had the letter. In Kent's handwriting. Well, how'd we get one? Well, I have a copy of his handwriting. Got an autograph to show my grandchildren. I wanted them to see what a dangerous age their grandma lived in. You mean write a letter supposedly from Kent? All fair in love and war, Chief, and this is both. Now, if a certain girl happened to have one of those letters... A real hot love letter. Mm -hmm, one that would steam the envelope open by itself. Well? Yeah. Now, here's how we'll all go about it. After Kent's last performance, he'll probably be in his dressing room. Well, Florence will be there for a while... They're going to work out plans to put the Bobby Kent fan clubs on an international basis. Oh, I see. Sort of a U.N. bebop, huh? Yes, miss, can I help you? Yes. I want the sloppiest, biggest sweater you got to hang down to my bobby sock. She wants to look as close to 15 as possible. Oh, a masquerade party? More of a hunting trip. Oh, well, miss, here's the biggest sweater we have in the shop. Care to try it on? Yeah. Just drop it over my head. Oh, certainly. There you are. Gosh, that sure looks big, Miss Revere. <laughs> oh. It's fine around the knees. I'll take it, miss. Yes, miss. Even that don't make you look... Well, 16, Miss Revere. Oh, I will when I get my hair do get up in real cute makeup. Uh, here's your sweater, Miss. Thanks. And when I get working on that Bobby Kent, he'll be so gaga about me, he'll want to hug and kiss me. Will that be all, Miss? Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> Mr. Kent, it was sure super keen of you to invite me to your dressing room to, to discuss things and imagine you making little insignificant me president of all the Bobby Kent fan clubs in America. I don't think nothing of it, Chick. You're a nice little girl. I'm going to even turn over Canada and Alaska to you. Let's see who it is, Chick. Yes, Maestro. Golly, I hope whoever it is won't stay long. Oh, hello, Miss. 
You looking for somebody? Oh, sure enough, sure enough. Hey, honey, child. I've come to see my drool boy. Drool boy? Mm -hmm. That's what we call him down south. Up here in enemy territory, he's known as Bobby Kane. Oh, you're looking for me, girlie? Oh, Drew, boy, sugar pie, it's me. Maisie Bell, Ulysses Grant Lee. Ulysses Grant Lee? Mm, that's my grandpappy, sugar. He was a part-time soldier in the war, remember? Fought days for the north and nights for the south. Oh, golly, you sure look as pretty to me as a mess of sour belly stone and a pot of goose grease. Are you sure we've met before, Chick? Am I sure? Well, honey pie, don't you remember me from your fan club back in Tennessee? Remember the gals that wore the Bobby socks and no shoes? Well, Miss Lee, as a fellow worshiper at the shrine of Bobby Kent, I've got some good news for you. It's about the presidency of all the Bobby Kent fan clubs. Oh, them platinum tonsils here told you all about choosing me all as president of his fan club, you all. But, but he just appointed me president. Well, honey, he couldn't have chosen you over me. Why, just look at you. Your sweater isn't even sloppy. It is, too. But not like mine. Mine's a mess. Now, just a minute. There must be some mistake. Yes, and I'd like to find out once and for all who made it. And so would well, I. Well, 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 I have proof, honey lamb, sugar pie, little mint julep. I got a letter that you sent me direct to my home in Georgia. Georgia? But a moment ago, you said you came from Tennessee. Oh, did I? Well, you... Well, you've heard of those old rambling southern mansions. Yes. Well, I was really rambled. Now, this has gone far enough. I never wrote you a letter offering you the presidency of my fan clubs, and I can prove it. But I declare, honey, you sure have a mighty short memory. Why, well, here's a letter right here. A letter? Let me read it, Bobby. Your eyes may be as weak as your memory. Dear Maisie Bell, honey, sugar, sweetheart, darling. Well, you all better skip the first five pages and get to the beginning of the letter. Oh, say, this is ridiculous. I'll but... never forget those nights on your plantation when you took me in your arms and whispered tenderly, Maisie Bell, will you promise to be president of all my fan clubs? Yours very be, Boppy. Bobby, passion flower, can't. Well. Now, I never wrote such a stupid letter. <laughs> I thought it was kind of cute. You didn't write it, huh? Well, this looks exactly like your handwriting. But gee, thanks. Oh, I mean, it is. Oh, look, baby girl, chick, honey. You know you're the only girl for me, Gladys, don't Gladys. you? Gladys, my name is Florence. I keep thinking this is Detroit. Now, look, baby, I can explain. No explanation uh, is necessary, Mr. Kent. I'm going back to drool over Frankie Lane or somebody. Hello, Florence. Jerome. I just happened to be passing the theater, and I thought I'd drop by and apologize to Mr. Kent for punching him in the nose. Don't apologize, Jerome. Just punch him in the eye. No, no, don't. So long, folks. I'm going back to my hotel and have a good cry. I'm awful sorry for both of us, Florence, honey. But if it will make you feel any better, you all can have the honor of being the president of the Bobby Kent fan club. I used to think he was solid, but I didn't think it was only between the ears. No, I'm through with Bobby Kent and all singers. All I want now is Jerome. If you'll forgive me for being such a silly drip. Oh, you're not a silly drip, Florence. You're a wonderful drip. I mean, you're... you're rare. Well, I, I guess you two kids want to smooch for a spell. So I'll scram out and leave you to your spark. And I'll just turn on Bobby Boy's radio before I go. Romance without music ain't nothing, no time, no place, no how. And now we bring you America's latest singing sensation, Floyd Boyd. Floyd Boyd! Floyd Boyd! you hear that? Now she's gone on him. Quiet, Jerome. Sing it, Floydy Boy, sing it. They're all alike, sooner or later. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie.
now, once again, here's Maisie. Well, you never can tell what makes a woman tick. I guess we're all romanticists. We go for a lock of curly hair that just won't stay put. A shy smile that makes you feel the fellow should be mothered. But some of those fellows who look like they need a mother, oh, brother. <laughs> it's funny, though. All girls have a crush or two. They moan and drool, put silly stuff in their diaries. But when the time comes to get married, they always pick on a plain, ordinary, nice, sensible fella. And then they moan and drool about a new idol. But there's a difference this time. They don't put the stuff down in their diaries, if they're smart. I think the real trouble with wives and husbands, too, is that they don't appreciate what they got. The grass always looks greener on the other side. Grass, huh? That being married and having a couple of kids ain't hay either. I know if I had my choice, I'd rather have a husband who comes home every night and buries his face in a newspaper than one of those Hollywood glamour boys who comes home and buries his face in the mirror. <laughs> I ain't saying that you can't dream about those handsome girl picture sides. <gasps> Which reminds me, <laughs> I gotta get home and get to sleep. I got a dream left over from last night with Van Johnson that I want to finish. heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical On the Town, starring Gene Kelly, Frank Sinatra, Betty Garrett, and Ann Miller. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Hans Conried, Gloria McMillan, Gil Stratton, Frank Gerstle, Jerry Hausner, Barney Phillips, and Virginia Agnello. Jack McCoy speaking. <laughs>